Hi, you clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Friday. Over here in the Atlantic, still fairly quiet, though there is some more activity going on with some more cloud cover. We have a lot of cloud cover going on now. In the Southwest Caribbean and near Central America, there's a tropical wave that has just come west of Jamaica over here. And you can see that the area in the Southwest Caribbean that had some mid-level energy that's been sitting there for the last couple days actually looks a little bit nicer this morning. It's interacting with this tropical wave. And you, there's a little bit of cyclonic curvature to the lower level winds here, no circulation, but this area actually looks kind of nice and what, were it to be farther north, I would be a little bit more concerned. As it stands, this is going to be moving in this general direction here, not going to hit a whole lot of water, probably going to clip Honduras and Nicaragua and then run right into the Yucatan before it has a whole lot of a chance over the water. But it's interesting to see what's going on in this area of the world because we have this over here in the eastern Pacific and this is a nice little cyclonic circulation but it hasn't looked any better than it has over the last couple of days and the models were very bullish a couple of days ago on turning this into tropical storm Beatrice and perhaps a hurricane with time as it moved off to the west northwest over here but what's interesting is it hasn't organized a whole lot yet and the models have backed off on their aggression and it's interesting because normally when we're talking about development coupled between these two basins we're talking talking about something struggling in the Atlantic with competition in the Pacific, with the Pacific having the upper hand. Here, as it appears, this is the struggling one, and the competition is actually coming from the Atlantic side over here. And the reason you can tell that is when you're looking for the concentration of the greatest energy when you're looking in an area of tropical convection, you're generally looking for the area of highest pressure aloft, and we can tell that by the motion of the upper level clouds. And if you look closely, you'll be able to see it in a minute when I show you the wind barbs overlaid, but you can see the cirrus clouds curving anticyclonically here, and an equatorward outflow channel here. The upper level high is somewhere around in here, near Central America, not a very strong one, but it's around here over this over this in the eastern Pacific. The upper level winds are all out of the east over here. The main energy is centered right over here near Central America and the Southwest Caribbean. So this is actually fighting the Eastern Pacific system right now and kind of winning at this point. And the Eastern Pacific system hasn't been able to organize a whole lot today. And it'll be slow to organize over the next couple of days, possibly still developing. But the models are not as strong with it, which is interesting to see. And you can see this over here on the upper level winds. As you can see, the outflow channels are here and here. Not that strong of an anticyclone, but it is in here where the heat is. And all the winds are easterly across this eastern Pacific system, bringing some shear. Notice this deep layer ridge is sitting over Mexico over here. And this isn't supposed to really move. So as this tries to develop to the south of this ridge, it's not going to have much of a poleward outflow channel because of this ridge, which will limit its intensity. Um, again, some of these eastern Pacific storms will encounter this problem where this big ridge sits over here in some La Nina to neutral years and will keep some of these storms at bay because of the outflow not being allowed to develop strongly in there. But we'll see how it goes with this system. Here's the GFS day 8. We are watching again for broad low pressure to develop in the Bay of Campeche as this wave moves across the Yucatan and puts its energy into here. As this system moves out, the monsoon trough will probably lift more energy conglomerating in this area from both the tropical wave interacting with the monsoon trough and perhaps this wave, which in 6 to 8 days will be adding its energy into this situation and will have a mixture that could allow some low pressure to develop. You can see it's broad here, not too strong, fairly far west here. It's been pushing ever so slightly farther west as the days go by. You can see the area of precipitation with it. Now if we look at the European 8 to 10 day mean, 500 millibar heights and anomalies, notice again all the blocking near and east of Alaska up here over Canada. And what this does is you can see the blue down here, there's a couple of short waves to the south of this blocking because this blocking implies that the jet stream is going to be a little bit farther south down here. And the interesting thing about this jet stream being farther south is a couple of things. One, you can see there's a little bit of a break in the 500 millibar ridge here. Over Texas, you can see the western periphery of this ridge has moved out over the Gulf of Mexico, which implies that if there's any moisture sitting down here at all, it could possibly get drawn north, bringing the west or central Gulf Coast perhaps some rainfall and some relief to their drought. The other thing about this jet stream being a little bit farther south also is that it 
tends to squash ridges over the Gulf of Mexico. And that's going to be interesting coming up with the situation because when you're looking for a tropical cyclone to really develop and have a good environment, you're wanting a very symmetric upper anticyclone, very uh, certain it looks like a circle, it's symmetric. And when you have that, you generally have the area of greatest upper divergence right at the center of the upper level high where all the winds are moving outward radially and providing that upper divergence directly over the cyclone. If we look at this upper level high here on day 8 on the GFS, you can see it right here over the southern Gulf of Mexico. If we were looking for this to be a symmetric high, it would have a center right here it looks like, and you'd expect the center of low pressure to be directly underneath it, feeding back and, and creating a warm core environment throughout the troposphere. Here, however, you can see that this upper level high is not symmetric. We have it squashed up here to the north by this jet stream, which you can see pressing down on it. So it's a little bit elongated over here. And the thing about elongated highs is that when you get a jet stream pressing down on it, it changes the areas of maximum upper divergence. So instead of being here near the center of the high pressure system, instead the area of maximum upper divergence on this map is right about here. And you can see why. There's a couple of reasons. When you elongate it out here, you can see that the jet stream has a core, this tight core over here. And this area is sitting right near the right entrance region of the jet stream. We talk about these entrance and exit regions of the jet. You have one here, the left entrance region, the right exit region. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this drawn. This is going to be the left exit region over here. And these have areas of upper divergence and convergence. Here, the right entrance region is one of the most notorious regions for having upper divergence and upward motion supporting storm development. And you can see this here. The squash ridge has a jet stream to the north of it, and so the upper divergence is displaced to the northeast. So if we go back to the precipitation map, you can see where the heaviest precipitation is. It's sitting under the area of the most favorable upper level dynamics. The area of low pressure is way back here. So it's not that organized on the GFS. In other words, as this comes north, since the jet stream is farther south in this pattern, as this tries to come north, this jet stream is going to disrupt the dynamics and make it spread out, elongate, and perhaps bring some of this precipitation farther east than you normally think it would be. And it'll be interesting to see which portions of the Gulf Coast can try to get some rainfall out of this if we get a low down here. And we have to get that low, first of all. The GFS is one of the only models that tries to develop this. The no gaps has a little bit of a something down here, but not much. Uh, it is interesting to see that the no gaps doesn't bring it out of here, but it brings it straight out of the eastern Pacific and brings it up. So it'll be interesting to see how this situation evolves. The overall pattern does favor upward motion in this area of the world. This is the GFS MJO you can see bringing it out into quadrant one over here. And this is the UK Met, a little more bullish, doing the same thing not quadrant, octant, excuse me. These are octants or phases of the MJO. Phase 1 brings upward motion to the Western Atlantic. And this is the map I was going to show you yesterday and couldn't. I, what I did is I went back and I looked at all the June developments since 1978 when satellite data began in the Western Caribbean and the Southern Gulf of Mexico. The, the most frequent breeding ground for June storms and looked at the MJO phase for each and you can see that there's a very clear conglomeration of storms right here that formed during June right along the line of phase one and phase two here mostly in phase one showing up with only a couple of outliers over here the main congregation being very pronounced which is very interesting to see because early in the season conditions are fairly fragile as we all know for these tropical cyclones it is hard to get them to go and very easy to rip them apart so most of them are going to develop when the conditions are most favorable here when the MJO is over this part of the world and you can see we are going to that based on the models here over the next couple of weeks so by month's end, we may have had a couple of attempts at monsoonal type mischief going on with the intertropical convergence zone invading the Caribbean or the southern Gulf of Mexico. And with these tropical waves coming out one after another, we've got one here, we've got one here, we're going to have another behind that. <clears throat> and they're going to be coming in here, bang, 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 adding the energy to the pattern. And you can get some development to get sparked from that if the conditions are right. So we will continue to have to watch the situation. The pattern doesn't guarantee development, but the potential is there. So we will continue to monitor the situation over the next couple of weeks. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.